Welcome to Invest Stories, a podcast about real stories, real estate, and taking real action. Join hosts John Cooper and Kyle Robertson as they talk investing, mindset, and taking that first step. We all have a story. What's yours? The Invest Stories Podcast. Welcome to the Investories podcast with me, John Hooper. And uh, Kyle is MIA today. Actually, he's on a well-deserved family vacation. So uh, yeah, you're you're flying with me today. So uh, I wanted to talk to you about five-star reviews. Please go and give us a lovely uh, five-star review. And uh, I also want to talk to you about our guest today, Jason Rash. Jason is a real estate investor. He's an MLM top earner. And he talks all about how to win in money, marriage, and life, how he got started in investing, uh, his journey, where he's going, where he's come from, and uh, a lot of kind of energy and good advice on how to get started. So without further ado, here's Jason. Welcome to Investories, Jason Rash. Hi, Jason. Hey, John. How are you doing today, my friend? I am good. How are you? Man, I am great. I want to first of all say thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. The honor is definitely mine. I got a feeling this is going to be packed with energy. It's going to be fantastic, honestly. Some great conversation. And uh, who knows, man, we're going to dive into the weeds of some stuff. And, and it, this is going to be great. You stole my intro, Jason. Absolutely on the energy. I love it. Um, coming straight out of the blocks. That's, that's awesome. Um, so investories, we like to get to know people. We like to understand kind of what they're about, uh, their philosophy, their investing philosophy, mindset, things that change their life. So can you give us kind of the lead in? How do, what do we need to know about Jason? Oh, my God. Number one, I don't quit. Number two, I don't quit. And then number three, I don't quit. And, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, that could be like a blessing or it could be a curse at the same time. My wife is like, oh, my God, are you still on this thing? And I'm like, yeah, I'm still on this thing. We're still doing this thing. We're still doing this thing. I love it. So you're celebrating the She puts a test down, face down, takes off her glasses. I'm getting chill bumps right now thinking about it and just remembering it. And uh, she was like, hey, listen, you have something special to offer the world. And I'm not going to hold that back. I'm going to go ahead and pass you. So, Thank you for listening to the Investories Podcast. We all have a story. What's yours? The Investories Podcast. (laughs) Controversial. That's right, from the 60s, man. And uh, he's going to 27 different directions, but he goes nowhere. That was me, man. I was in a rock band. I was playing. I was trying to get signed. Finally got signed. Uh, but it's, it's just that drive. I've just been, uh, just been driven, driven. Sometimes not knowing which direction I'm going, but I've always been driven. Firstly, we've got to find out, what was the rock band called? It's called Amity Lane, A-M-I-T-Y Lane. Uh, the singer of the band was in another band called Trust Company. They used the same producer as Linkin Park for their first oh, album. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was signed to Geffen Records. So uh, you guys can go check that out on YouTube. It's not on Apple. It's not on Spotify because you have to actually pay a monthly fee to be on Apple and Spotify. However, it's on YouTube. So you can go check that out. Solid. That, yeah. That's pretty cool. So 
from from rock band to investments what was the well i guess the first question is in terms of i'm i'm an ideas person i have 96,000 ideas grinding away all at once yeah. how do you kind of tame those or, or how do you team up with your spouse to do that there's always that interconnectivity i like that sure sure uh so i actually was asked this question i was in the barber chair just got my hair cut today in the guy i've been mentoring mentoring thanks man i've been mentoring him along the way and he asked basically the same question so number one i i find things that are going to work for me um and i and i follow that one idea until success so like for instance let's say the rock band thing, right? I told you I got signed. It took me 15 years. I started playing at 15 and I got signed at 30. Went on tour. I could buy my CD and Best Buy, all that cool stuff. But the way I drove it was I, I just kept seeing that same singular vision in my mind. Once that was in, like once it was over, right? It was over. I didn't go back and try to relive it. That's the other thing is like, once I hit the target and, I'm, and I know that I've got it, I'm like, okay, do I want to pursue this further? Yes or no? The answer is no. I let it go. And never look back on it ever again. I've never looked back. I've never wanted to like be back in bands or be back in smelly, stinky bars. So I went on to become a personal trainer. And then I was super successful at that. I got picked up by a guy who runs a $200 million company, traveled the world with this guy. And I just drove that until he was like, hey, listen, we got to part ways. Totally cool. And became an entrepreneur, then got into investing and so on and so on. But it, it's about... For me, it's about having one singular vision. Um, that's the biggest thing. So I'll, I'll give you an example of how we got into real estate investing now, because a lot of people just know me for real estate investing. So we almost lost our house in September of 2015, and I've been broke almost all of my adult life. I just turned 45. At 32 years old, I was making, what was it, uh, $15 an hour, so like $29,000 a year, supporting a family of four. It's really, really tough to do wow, in solid. Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, man, I got to figure something out here, man. Like I've really got to figure this out. So I had to phone the mortgage company because I asked my dad for money and he didn't have any. I asked my mom, God bless both of my pa our parents, my wife's and mine. They, they couldn't really help us. So I phoned the mortgage company and life is always trying to teach you a lesson. This was a major lesson for me when my dad said, Hey, you need to call and file for loss mitigation. So I was like, okay, not knowing what that is. I was like, Hey, I need to file for loss mitigation. She's like, Oh, you mean bankruptcy? And I was like, uh, and, it, and it hit me all at once. Like it like just a whirlwind saying, there's something you don't know about creating money. There's something you don't know about saving it. And there's definitely something you don't know about investing it. Like you don't know something about money. You need to figure it out now because this is the real world consequence of you not paying attention and staying focused. So I learned from that lesson. We didn't lose our house, almost didn't lose our house. And then me and my wife became entrepreneurs. We figured out sales and marketing. My wife is a master marketer. So we really leaned into sales and marketing. And this is 20, you know, I'd say this is probably 2017. And we got into network marketing, blew it up, made millions of dollars, and then took all that money and started studying more money and how to reinvest and be smart with it and go on with it. That's awesome. Um, I think there's a, there's a lot of people that can can completely align with that. And I was certainly one um, lack of kind of understanding. And then for me, I had lack of accountability of why, you know, why don't I know that I can blame school, I can blame everything else. But actually, what, like, why didn't I go and figure that one out? And that that's really interesting. How did you how did you guys decide on real estate? What was the process to to decide on that? So my father passed away in June of 2020 and um, we started making money with Monet. It's our network marketing company. We, we joined in um, December of 2016. By the end of 2018, or excuse me, by the end of 2017, December of 2017, exactly one month later, one year later, we were making $42,000 a month. Fast forward 12 more months from there. By the way, we we're working our ass off. I'm talking like 16 hours a day, every day, missing holidays, missing all sorts of stuff. One more year from there, we're making $80,000 a month. I mean, we're, we're approaching a million dollars a year at this point. My dad told me, he said he raised me on the stocks and stuff like that when I was younger. He's talked to me about stocks, but he leaned into me right before he passed away and said, hey, you need to do something for your family. You need to get into real estate investing. And I didn't listen to him, to be very honest with you. I took that money and just threw it all in the stock market. I lost $26,000 in eight minutes. Poof, it just gone, evaporated. I couldn't control it. I couldn't stop it. I had no idea it was coming. Like, nothing. And that was the moment, another moment from, from God, whatever it is you believe in that I, I feel is a learning lesson. That was like, okay, what can you learn here? You just lost $26,000 in eight minutes. All this stuff is made up. Every bit of it's made up. Every bit of it's made up. Number one. Number two, what if it was $260,000 in eight minutes or a lifetime of savings, $2.6 million in eight minutes, poof, just gone like that. And I was like, 
take all your money out, take it out now immediately. Cause I couldn't control it. I couldn't impact the outcome. So I was like, okay, I don't want to do stocks. Maybe I need to go back and listen to what my dad was telling me about investing in real estate. So I honestly, here's the deal. I, I pushed away whenever he said you need to invest in real estate. I went, I, like I told you before, I didn't really graduate high school at the top of my honors. I didn't go to college. So I was like, man, maybe there's something, maybe these guys are like smarter than me or they have that real estate investing gene, or maybe it's complex math. And I didn't believe in myself. That's what it was. That's what it boiled down to. Is I didn't believe in me, but I went back, revisited it, started jumping in a few masterminds. I was like, okay, all right, I can get this. I understand this. I can do this. And the next thing you know, within 90 days of losing the $26,000, I was making our deal, first deal. Right? I said like, hey, listen, once I lost the money, I bought three books, right? I bought three books and then started reading a bunch of videos and watching a bunch of videos on the internet. And then I said, okay, here's the deal. I'm not going to be one of those people that gets into real estate investing and never actually invest. They're just all into it because I'm listening mm-hmm. to podcasts. I'm reading books. I'm not doing anything. I said, I'm going to read three books. And if I can't learn how to invest in single family homes in three books and I can't understand it, then I'm just not going to do it. So I get into the first book. Within a week, I have the first book done. I'm like, okay, cool. I can do this. I start talking about it on social media. I'm starting on the second one. We're talking probably 15 days, 16, 20 days after losing the money. I have somebody reach out to me. I hadn't seen him in 20 years. From high school and said, hey man, I got a house. And I was like, oh really? He's like, this is before the pandemic, right? So it's just like, hey, hey man, I got a house. You know, do you want to um, do you want to do this? Do you want to like take a look at it? I was like, yeah, sure. So he he sends over a Zillow link. He's like, it's 63,750 bucks and I will sell it to you. It's 1,900 square feet, three bedroom, wall brick. And I was like, oh my God, either this is going to fall flat on my face or I found a unicorn. Turns out I found a unicorn. Back house cash flows now. I'm looking at my chart over here. It's like over seven hundred dollars a month. Unbelievable. Wow. And so yeah. And so I was like, okay, I got this. And I realized in real estate investing that I can control and impact the outcome. And unlike stocks and Bitcoin, you want to talk about Bitcoin in a second? We'll definitely do that too as well. Unlike stocks or Bitcoin, I can replicate that success over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, all the way until the cows come home. Because I mean, that's what success really is. It's it's doing the exact same thing as boring as it becomes, but it's the exact same steps to get 100 homes, to get 10 homes, to get one home. It's the exact same thing. Jason, I love that energy. And I think, um, so I'm, I'm slightly different to you in terms of how I kind of found real estate investing. I sure. basically had some money and I'd saved some money and I didn't know what to do with it other than I really wanted a Porsche 911, but thought that was probably not the best, uh, best thing to do. So I actually went and bought a uh, condo. I lived in the UK at the time and just went and bought a condo and rented it out. And it paid, it was enough to pay for itself. I knew the area. I knew the block. It was in the same block I was renting in. Um, and I knew kind of, it would do okay. And it would appreciate and all that good stuff. So it, I kind of did what I'd called the bare minimum of just like throwing some money into something with no yeah. real analysis and stuff. And it, and it's, you know, it's gone up in value. It's worth more. I'm in the process of, of disposing of it. Um, and then fast forward to probably two years ago, that's when I started to read and listen to podcasts. And like you, I, I had that same thing of like, I don't want to be a, a amateur investor in terms of I'm just going to absorb all the material, but not actually buy anything. Yeah. Uh, so that, yeah, that's man. super interesting. Yeah. 99% of people who want to get into real estate, never get into it. They just never pull the trigger. They don't believe in themselves. Like I did in the beginning, they, they just don't believe in themselves. So yeah, absolutely. And they just overanalyze or wait or wait for a market crash or do this or do that, but never, ever, ever, ever take action. I'm like, I tell everybody all the time, I'm like, you will learn more in your first deal than you'll learn from every book in the world. All together. Mm-hmm. You read all of them, you'll learn more in the first deal than you will all them. But nobody ever takes the action. Yeah. And I think what's what's really interesting would be, do you have any kind of advice to get out of your own way? Is there something that worked for you? Or? So for me, it was number one, I wanted to, I didn't want to go back. For me, now I'll be very honest with you. My story may be a little different, but if you look back to September of 2015, when we almost lost our house, the reason why it was like that is because I lost my active income job poof, gone, right? I have no way of creating new income. I'm trying to make this thing work on the internet. I'm trying to sell some fitness programs and all sorts of stuff, trying to do whatever I can to make ends meet. But if I had investments in place, I would have never had to worry about that. And I was like, that's what I want. I don't want to be the guy that made tons of money. Him and his wife made a ton of money in network marketing. By the way, I think that's the greatest vehicle all time to to generate income really, really fast. Um, Make a ton of money in network marketing and then didn't do anything with it. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, so I was like, I need to do this in real estate. I got to do it. So for me, there was pain. 
It was the pain of knowing that if I had all this money and I just threw it away on cars, on, on my very big personal home, and I never did anything smart to pass down to my kids, I could be doomed to repeat this over and over and over until I learned that lesson. And that's what it was. It was just a lesson. And that's how that's how I got out of my own way. I think other people, you know, they could look at the bigger picture like, hey, listen, do you really trust the stock market? Do you trust really trust the 401k? And do you really trust the Bitcoin? You know, uh, it's 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 people that a I think you have to experience pain to get out of your own way. Mm-hmm. Because the pain overrides ex- personal experience and going through something overrides any should have, could have, would have, what ifs, should have, and how this could possibly play out. It's like, no, if I keep doing this, this is for sure what's going to happen. I don't want to do that again. I really like that. And I, I feel um, I kind of had a, a, a painful route a little bit in the fact that, yeah, I moved to the States, but I moved here not being able to work. Um, so I had to wait for a visa to work. Probably, you know, 10K in the bank, not a great deal of money. And so right. between my wife and I, we've we've clawed up to buy our first house in quite an expensive market, then buy a short term rental in in Big Bear up in California, um, Big Bear yeah. up in the mountains. Um, so we've we've been through that process and what we've are kind of what I call a, a North Star, which is a kind of point that I'm working towards or something that keeps me focused or keeps me in alignment is, you know, we've, we had a daughter a couple of years ago and is the place in Big Bear going to be worth more in a couple of years or when she's 20 than it is today? Yeah. So that's just generating wealth regardless of what happens. I had to put you on my Instagram real quick, man. (laughs) Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I agree with you. I I, I think real estate is the holy grail of all financial freedom. It really is. Um, You know, you want to talk about Bitcoin for a second. Can can we discuss Bitcoin for one second? Yes, we mentioned this before the interview. I was fascinated by your your article. And if you haven't haven't seen it, read Jason's Jason's article on the S and P five hundred and Bitcoin. It's really interesting. It's not. Um, it's it's got a very strong headline, and it's but it's a lot of good stuff in there. To be fair, well, I think a lot of people. So so here's my stance on Bitcoin, and I guess you could say it's the same for the stock market. But the issue with Bitcoin is it's only been around since two thousand nine. I don't I don't believe there's any experts out there. All these people are like I'm a Bitcoin expert. No, you're not. No, you're not. Let it be around 100 years and then you can be an expert because you have trailing data. But to be an expert and expert you you got, what, 12 years, 12 years of data. I mean, come on, let's be real. We haven't really experienced the market cycle. So that's the first thing. The second thing about Bitcoin is, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people are looking for a windfall. That's why they're putting their money in Bitcoin. They're not looking to get wealthy people that want. Because and here's the thing. I know people that are far, far wealthier than me. We're talking people making millions of dollars a month. And guess what? They have zero in Bitcoin, zero, zero in Bitcoin. You know, all my lenders, I talk to them. They won't, they they won't lend on Bitcoin. Nobody does because it's too volatile. And I'm just like, people that are investing in Bitcoin, like it, 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 the thing is they're looking for a windfall. They're looking for something, but most of those people, whenever they're, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's my, let me, I'm so sorry. Madam, oh my God, how do I stop this? Oh, sorry. Somehow my phone is set to default with a Voxer app and I can't figure out how to turn it off. I'm so sorry about that. But the thing about Bitcoin is, you know, I, that's what most people are looking for. They're looking for a windfall. I was at Whole Foods the other day, probably about three weeks ago again, and these two kids were there, probably all of 17, 18, 19. They were young. They didn't even look like they were in college. And they were talking to each other back and forth about Bitcoin. And the thing about it is, and I hear this kind of conversation all the time, they're taking all their money, they're living at home, they're living in the basement, they're throwing it all in Bitcoin. They're like, man, when Bitcoin goes to the moon or when it moons, so to speak, I'm going to retire and buy a private island. The problem with that is the worst thing that could ever happen to anybody in Bitcoin is that they hit it big. Because A, number one, they're not going to know what to do with that money. Number two, they know they can't replicate that over and over and over again. And number three, they know that luck was a major, major, major factor in their success. It had nothing to do with anything else except just sheer timing. They didn't like do anything else but push a button. That's, that's the real thing about Bitcoin. I, really- I like all of that. And I, I invest yeah. it. I, I say I invest. I buy Bitcoin. I don't really invest. I don't play the markets up and down. I sure. I put in some money now and again and and keep a a level. If it goes up, I may sell some of that level. To be fair, um, the volatility will go down. So that that's up and down, right? So we've seen a massive crash, but um, it's going to slowly change and and be less volatile. Look at gold. It doesn't really go up that much. It doesn't really go down that much. And that's kind of where it's aiming to be and i do think for me it represents kind of a future of a monetary system 
but it's not the be all and end all. The other thing, the negative of it is it's not material in the fact that if I buy a house in San Diego, I can go and live in that house. Whereas, whereas with Bitcoin, you, you, can you can't. And um, so I, I'm with you on that. And that's why I wanted to bring that up, because I think you, what you're saying is really solid. And it's, it's like chasing Tesla up and down the stock market or Google up and down the stock market. You're trying to find something. And actually, what tends to happen is people invest and the, the contrarian thing happens, especially in Bitcoin. So a lot of people all buying at a high level. Well, guess what? A lot of people with a lot of Bitcoin will sell at that level and plunge it down. So to take it as a I'm going to buy and hope it keeps going up is is really interesting. Whereas to to buy it as a, a asset that stores value and is going to be a currency exchange in the future, I think that's a better viewpoint. So don't go all in, I guess it's my advice. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, if you want to if you want to put like 500 bucks a month in there, yeah, go for it. But I mean, other than that, I, I would not, just me, I personally wouldn't. No, I, I get it. And I've, I've been investing and followed it over time. So I'm, I'm up, right? But yeah, it's been over, sure. over four or five years. It's not it's not like yesterday and then hope it yeah. pops up a couple of points. It's, it's terrifying to watch that. So I, in that article, I'm t- I talk about a story and I want to teach you, you guys like a, 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 a kind of a concept here. Okay. I call it return on attention. Okay. We always have to return on investments. This is a return on attention, right? So a few years ago or a year or so ago, a friend of mine, there's three, there's three brothers. And I think they have a, like a sister they've adopted or something like that. They all get the family together at this, this, this point for Christmas. It's a very big thing because they're all like doing their own lives or grown up uh, early twenties, things like that. They've got their own lives going on basically. And so at Christmas time for them to get together at this time was a very magical moment. So as they're there, they're probably only there for like three or four days, like together. And um, the way it was conveyed to me is it was like, it was a very short window of time, but the youngest one of all kept talking about stocks and Bitcoin, mainly Bitcoin. And he kept checking his little Bitcoin um, on his phone all the time. It was like an addiction yeah. almost. He couldn't really, his father was trying to get his attention. Hey, let's go do this together. Let's go outside and chop some wood. Let's go do this kind of stuff. And it, it was like the, the, the kid was never even there. And this story is related to me by the older brother. The, the kid was never even really there, like present in the moment. Whenever it was time to do family photos, he would get up begrudgingly or pose begrudgingly. But it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm so happy to be here. Turns out the father passes away just a few months after that Christmas. And what you've got to think about, I'm getting chill, I'm sorry, now thinking about this, man, like retelling the story. What you have to think about is you have to think about your return on attention. Like the more you invest into crypto and stocks, the more you invest, the more you're hyper-focused into all the little market dips, okay? But the problem is it's taking you away from the real world stuff that's going to enrich your life. That it could be a real, real investment. Like people pouring into you or a story or a situation or some problem-solving situations. Whereas with real estate, we got 14 properties. I don't do anything. Like I may manage, it may take 20 minutes a month to manage those things. I, I, I get checks. They come in, whether I go to Cabo, whether I go to the moon, whether I'm going to do go to Australia, it doesn't matter. Checks come in. But the great thing about it is that I'm able to focus on my time, on my parent, on my, excuse me, on my children. I'm able to be present with my wife. And when I'm with my mom, my father just passed away recently. But when I'm hanging out with my mom, I'm not checking my stock tickers and I'm not checking because I don't have stocks, right? I'm not checking Bitcoin. It's going to have Bitcoin. None of that matters to me. All I care about is one thing, and that is passive income. When I say passive, it's also your attention as well. So hopefully mm-hmm. that's helpful for you guys. No, I, I love that. And absolutely, I don't know how people day trade it because it's not day, it's day and night. It's 24 hour market. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, yeah, I don't think I've got the, uh, I don't think I'd enjoy that at all. I think that would drive me uh, insane. Yeah. So, I mean, I look, I'm not against Bitcoin. I'm not against Bitcoiners. It's just the, the fact that like, I really get like so many people like, well, it splits, it's going to do this, it's going to be that. They, they speak in terms of so factual. And I'm like, really? Like, because if, if everybody knew that, that it was going to split and then half and then double and then split again, then everybody would invest in Bitcoin because it's such a quote unquote sure thing. Yeah. And that's the it's, thing is, it's, like, it, it's purely speculative. Yeah. Yeah. Tesla's going to go to the moon. I'm like, dude, you were like way too deep in the weeds. You were so far in the forest up against the trees. You can't see the real, the real thing that's going on. And so <laughs> I highly encourage anybody that if you're in an investment, step back, just step back and see the bigger picture as to what is, what's going on, you know, step back and see the bigger picture as to, is this real or am I just like sucked into it, believing my own hype? Mm-hmm. No, I like that. So let, let's talk about your real estate. Uh, 
yeah. different properties. So you started with one. When did you buy your, your first investment? So about the first one, what year are we in? 2022. So about the first one, uh, December of 20, 2020, actually. I might made a mistake earlier. I said it was before the pandemic. It was actually during the pandemic. So I bought that one in 2020, closed uh, February 5th, 2021 is what happened. Close, when, no, yeah, closed February 5th, 2021. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I'm trying to get all my dates together. No, that's perfect. And wh whereabouts is it? Montgomery, Alabama. So oh, I cool. actually yeah. flew in. Yeah, I flew in to do the closing and I flew my son with me as well. I said, son, I want you to understand this is a monumental moment. While I was there, guess what I did? I went out and I picked up property number two. I was like, walked through one of the properties. I was like, done, let's roll. We're going to put a contract on this one too. I mean, yeah, it's been fantastic. So, so was single family? All of them. Yeah. All okay. of them. All, of them all single family. Thing too, by the way, John, they're all three bedroom, two bath or four bedroom, two bath. I don't do two twos, three ones, two ones, none of that stuff. I'm looking for people that are going to come into the house. They're going to build build a life at that house. They're going to stay there for three to five years. Cause you know, I mean, you get a tenant in and out every single year that, that eats up all your cash flow. You want them to stay for a very long period of time. You want them to have uh, the ability to grow a family in that home. So that's, mm -hmm. that's what I look for. I don't buy houses with pools. I don't buy houses with basements. I don't buy houses that have a bunch of wood and stuff. I don't buy fancy decks. I don't do, um, I don't do like manicure yards, things like that. It's a very, very, uh, I don't buy flood zones. I don't buy houses in flood zones. That's a real, that's a real bad thing actually. Yep. So I have, a, I have a system. It's all part of the system. That's awesome. And so what was the, so you got the first one, picked up the second one while you're in market. How yeah. did you, how are you financing these? Are these on residential loans or are you kind of doing some commercial financing or? No, no, no. I, well, so first of all, I, I, I'm going to use up all my loans from the government. That's the first, because that's the cheapest money you're ever going to find. So I put out 20% into the loan of my own cash, and I just go buy the property. That's how I do it. I've refinanced out. Um, so I refinanced one of the very first one, refinanced that out, got some money out. And when my dad passed away, he left me this uh, um, Cracker Jack box. It was my grandmother's house in North Carolina. And uh, it was it's not worth a lot, but I put a mortgage on it. And so I took that out and that right there covered almost all of my down payments for my first 10 properties. I got all wow. my money back instantly. That, that right there is the true power of real estate, you guys. Mm -hmm. It's like the best money you will ever make is money you're not required to pay taxes on. So I get the money back, right? Instantly, I sign five documents. I get the money back. It was about $180,000, got it back. The house has a mortgage on it now. That mortgage costs ten seventy four dollars a month. Well, the renter in the house pays $1,200 a month. So that minus a property management, I'm still making money. It's completely covered. And that is a true power of real estate. It's completely free money. I'm not required to report it. I can do whatever I want to with it. I can flush it down the toilet or hop on a private plane to Dubai with the family. That's the greatest thing about real estate is the freedom. And you can't do that in Bitcoin or stocks either or your 401k. No. And um, so I noticed that you're not necessarily fixed on appreciation. You're more on cash flow. Is that, is that right? Is that a long-term strategy or do you think that will change? Uh, so for me, I like cash flow. I can't eat appreciation. And if I get in trouble, I can't sell my equity to somebody. I mean, I, I just can't. So for me, I mean, you got to think about how banks work, right? So whenever banks go in to look at your loan, they don't care if you have a million dollars in the bank over here. They want to know what your income is, your working income. They want to know because mm -hmm. this could be gone, poof, tomorrow. You can make a stupid investment and lose it all. But they want to know that you have stable income. Same thing with like, follow what banks do. That's what I was telling my barber today. I'm like, follow what the banks do. They were looking for stable income. Like if you're, they're looking for stable income, you need to be looking for stable income. So cash flow is the holy grail. It's the main bottom line that you can control. Because here's the thing, John, let me ask you a question. So what if you buy 10 homes, all right, all of them negatively cash flow hundred bucks. You're losing $100 per month on each house every single month. You know, some people are like, oh, it's not a big deal. I'm like, okay, fantastic. What if one of the tenants leaves and then the AC breaks in another house? Mm -hmm. Now you're out five, you got to come up with the five grand to repair the AC because you didn't have it in reserves. And now you're still having to pay all those. Now your problems have compounded and exasperated. Mm -hmm. so now instead of looking at a thousand dollars a month, you're looking at possibly two to $3,000 per month. You're also it's then in a, in a deficit when you go for the next loan, which is, yeah. is, you know, when they look at your income, unless you have high W2 income, that's going to be right. a problem. It's going to be a challenge. So that that's interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm not in that space where I'd purely go for appreciation and, would go negative cash flow. I just don't have that tactical um, belief, I guess, or yeah. that long-term yeah. strategy is kind of terrifying. 
Well, so I'll be honest with you. I've got friends of mine right now that are buying homes that didn't reach out to me. They never consulted me. They're buying homes with negative cash flow or zero, right at zero. And I'm like, this is the dumbest, dumbest stuff I've ever seen. I would never buy, by, by the way, guys, listen to me. There is never an okay reason to lose money. I don't care. Cause if you're flipping with a hundred bucks, like, oh, it's only a hundred bucks. Guarantee you're going to be flipping with a thousand. Oh, it's only a thousand. Guarantee you that will move to 10,000. Oh, it's only $10,000. And then it'll move to a hundred thousand. Oh my God, it's only a hundred thousand. Not a big deal. I mean, what you have to understand is there is no reason, a good reason to ever lose money. And if you're not cash flowing on your properties, like John asked, like, do I only invest for cash flow? I may pick up some appreciation, but all I care about is the money that I can put in my pocket at the end of the month. That's it. Now, if I can refinance them out like 20 years or five years down the road or whenever, whenever rates drop, if they do drop, I got a feeling I know when they'll drop and probably next presidential election, they'll probably drop quite a bit. <laughs> but Cynical, saying, Jason. Yeah, but, but here's the thing. I'm also, I'm not, I'm not betting on that. I, I invest right now. Like my lender today, we just closed on a property, excuse me, we put a contract on our property uh, four days ago. It got accepted this morning, okay? So she says, number one, you can put 20% down, you'll get a 7.1% interest rate. This, with that, that house would cash flow like 445 bucks, okay? But then she also said, if you put 25% down, we'll give you a 6.68% interest rate. I'm like, okay, well, I'm buying more equity into the property. I have no problem with that. And your cash flow would be like 538, something like that. And so I was like, all right, I'll I'll put I'll put the extra I'll put the extra down. I'll put the extra 5% down. But the thing is, I'm putting more money in and my mom, I talked to her, this was the most interesting thing of all. I talked to my mom this morning, told her what was going on. She's not involved in any of my real estate, she's never done any deals. And she's like, "Ooh, that sounds dangerous putting even more money in." I'm like, "Let me get this straight. You guys have a 401k. You complain to me that you're losing $30,000 a day and you're putting more money into an asset that you still can't control. And you're telling me that I'm the one that's doing dangerous stuff here. I would rather put more money into an asset that I can control and impact the outcome, raising rents, tenant quality, eviction, cash flow properties, cash out refi, all sorts of stuff, right? Lower property management fees, increase the rent, whatever you want to do, right? Instead of doing stocks and Bitcoin. So I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with it, John. Cash flow is the holy grail of all financial freedom. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Awesome. And so I, I should have asked this question first, which is at Montgomery, Alabama, how did you settle on that market? I lived there for 31 years. Oh, you did? Okay. Oh, there we go. So I was a land surveyor. This is what people don't, 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 don't know about me. So I was a land surveyor. I ate shit for years. I worked there for 12 years. Pardon me. I don't know if I could say that or not. Of course Maybe you can. I, can't. I, I, start, I, I ate shit for years. I started out in 1997 making $6.10 an hour. I left that company around 32 years old in like 2009, somewhere in there. I think 2009. And I was making like 15 bucks an hour. And that was it, man. I mean, I learned everything about flood patterns. I learned everything about socioeconomics. I, I put all the houses in that I'm buying now. I can remember sitting in the neighborhoods and laying out the streets and everything else. And me being the guy holding the rod, by the way, making $6 an hour, being like, how am I ever going to afford one of these? Never stopped <laughs> and said I couldn't. I just asked, how am I ever going to be afford, able to afford one of those? That's the biggest thing, man, is asking questions instead of saying declarative statements. Like, I'll never be able to be a real estate investor. I can't afford one of these homes. I mean, now I own like 14 of them. So, you know, we asking questions. To totally. And I I've been doing Jason Drees' um, mindset course. Uh, yeah. which has been really cool. Just, I had kind of an awakening a couple of years ago of just like reframing where I was going, what I wanted to do. And then this has been a good kind of refresher of that. But it is yeah. changing that question of like, I'm never going to into how can I do this? And it's, yeah. it's such a simple hack, right? Is what, what would you say, people that are struggling, people that are kind of focusing on, they can't do something or their mindset, or do you have any kind of tips, quick tips that you can kind of give people to reframe that kind of stuff? Yeah, I would say number one, I just want to say all wealth starts in the mind. That could be physical wealth, like like as far as a great shape, you're in great shape. That could be, you know, financial wealth. That could be as far as money. That could be wealth in your relationship with your spouse. Like you got to see it in your mind 
first. Number two, you have to commit to it. Number three, you have to dis you have to get rid of all negative distractions. Anyone in your life, including your mother, let me just tell you, anyone in your life that's a distraction tells you you can't do it, that sows doubt, sows confusion, sows discord in your life, drama, hello, like cut them out of your life. I can't find a knife big enough. Like, like I will literally cut those people out. I'll block them on Facebook. If they're negative, like to me and I know them and I have to communicate with them, I block them on Facebook. I don't take their calls as much. They may send an email. I may not respond to it. I block out everybody who's negative. I, life is too short. I'm 45 years old. Life is too short to be surrounded by people who make me doubt me. That's the first thing. Number two, I would start surrounding myself with people who are going places because I found out whenever I was at the lowest point in my life, my early 20s, when I did drugs, I was snorting cocaine. I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I was snorting cocaine, doing ketamine, smoking opium. Turns out I was at the lowest point in my life. I was running from who I was and denying me, my success and the dreams that I saw in my heart. But unfortunately, what had happened subconsciously was I had surrounded myself with people who were at the lowest point in their their life as well. Get those people out of your life. Cut them out. Doesn't matter. Get them gone. Whatever it takes. So surround yourself with people that are going places. Surround yourself with people that are dreaming big. Like one of my goals, I want to own 100 single family homes, but I also want to make a million dollars a month passively. Million dollars. A month. I've made it up to $110,000 a month passively. I want to go further, right? So I know some people are like, oh my God, how can you, I'm just saying like, you got to keep, you got to get around those people. Mm -hmm. I met my first billionaire recently. I know people that are making like hundreds of millions of dollars. And then I know people that only make a million, couple million dollars. And that's totally cool too. But I just want to know their hacks. I want to know what they're doing. I want to be around somebody that says, how the hell are you even able to like put food on the table, making a hundred thousand dollars a month? Like, 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 who do you think you are? And this dude's like making $5 million a month, right? There's a coach I hired and he was like, literally opened up the entire conversation and said, how do you even put food on the table without making that little <laughs> bit of money? I mean, he just like, bam, just hit everything just head on, man. It was incredible. And it was I did like, because all I walked. I was walking around and I was like, yeah, I'm making a hundred thousand dollars a month, six figures a month, thinking <laughs> I'm the shit. And he comes in, he's like, I don't even know how you put food on the table, man. Like, 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 what are your dreams and goals? Turns out I didn't have anything really beyond that. I had exceeded all my dreams and goals. I had exceeded everything my parents had ever asked of me to do. Any expectation my parents had of me, I blew it out of the water, like, like tenfold. And this dude right here is like, like, that's nothing, man. Like, what are you doing with your life? Like, you've done nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay, because yeah. he's no more than me. No, I, I follow Alex Hamozzi and he, he has this very similar view, which is you're kind of making a hundred mil, a hundred thousand, then you're making a million. And then you speak to someone, they're like, oh, I make a billion a year. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like what's that next level what's that ne next set of set of goals yeah. um speaking of which in terms of you said about the the hundred single family homes uh, being yeah. a target what are your cover kind of other real estate goals um so i'd like to go into like single family i mean not excuse me single family i like to go into storage units like one day uh i don't really have any desire to do multifamily. everybody's like you gotta do the multifamily. you gotta do the multifamily thing that's that's i have no desire to do that i do have a desire to do storage units one day i think the world is gonna i think there's gonna be more greater demand for those in the future but uh you know it's kind of like anything else man i want to master single family homes first that's the first goal so getting to 100 is like the first goal sure anybody can do 10 like anybody can do 10 but i'm like 100 takes a little bit more like you've got to figure out like ways to raise money you've got to figure out financing lending you've got to do a lot of different things and so i know that those skills and it's going to be challenging challenging to get to 100 homes in 10 years my original goal mm -hmm. was five but now it's like more like eight ten my wife would guarantee if she was here she would open this door right now and say why the fuck are we not getting them in five years what, what why <laughs> why but that's that's a partner that's a true partner man like she will call me on my bullshit she'll say hey dude the goal is not do it in five let's roll we're not getting, we're not moving the goal line back. We're, we're moving it forward. So she's amazing though. That, but that's the power of a great partner. So I would say single family homes, um, you know, and that's, that's just the tip of the iceberg from there. Yeah. I like that. I think there's, there's a lot in that and, and finding a partner as well is, is the, the kind of believes in you, but also then compliments you. Like my, my wife is super detail oriented. I'm not. So it's really cool to have someone that can convert like vision into kind of things and action and yeah. steps and stuff so it, it's been really cool with that she's the one with the vision and i'm the one that brings it to life i'm like an architect <laughs> architect is pretty much you know it, it's really funny man whenever you say that because 
I, I think that it's very hard to go do this alone. I feel mm -hmm. that everybody can go much further if they have a spouse who compliments them. Um, you know, my, mine is, mine's great. She's not here right now. She's left and she probably will never hear the podcast, but you know, it's, it's, it's a situation where people need someone that can see things just differently, whether it's a female, most of the time, it's a female that can just see things like you're seeing stuff head on, but they're coming in from a different angle and they can just see things that you have never been able to see. And they do it so effortlessly. I can remember one thing that my wife was telling me, she was like, why don't you just do this? And I was like, I've never thought of it like that. It's great. <laughs> and, and so just effortlessly, effortlessly all magic, all magic, no effort, just all magic, man. It, it's fantastic. So yeah, that's, that's the goal. And I'll stick with single family. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. I want to tell you guys something else too. I think the key in life is to have purpose. I've secretly been looking for something to like sink my teeth into that's going to last for like in the next 50 years. Real estate, I believe, is a, something that I can continually learn about. It will constantly evolve with different markets, but I'll stay in the same asset class. I'll always do single family homes. I really like it. I, re I, I just really enjoy it. But I may move the storage units. Or, you know, something else may come along like boat docks or R RV storage. I have no idea. But the goal is to see this 100 single family homes so I can learn the intricacies of how all that works. However long it takes, however long it takes, but I've been secretly looking for something that I can be passionate about for that long period of time to stay fueled up. I talked to people who were like 91 years old. I met a preacher the other day, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I met this preacher the other day, 91 years old. This dude well, had a more fire in his furnace. That's what he called it. He's got, I got a lot of fire in my furnace, man. I'm ready to go. 91 years old, man. And like, like more passionate about life and eager to get up every day and help and serve and like better himself than I've seen like 20 year olds, man. I mean, this guy was just like on fire for life. So he inspired me, man. I was like, if I could just do that, be 91 years old and have that much passion and that much drive and that much energy, then he'd do that more energy than me. Well, maybe not that much, but close. <laughs> 91, I mean, I'm happy. 91 is right? pretty good. Yeah. Dude, he was growing, but, but dude, yeah. he had so much passion in his voice and everything. It attracted me to him. So I know that he had something there, something magical. He had that X factor, if you will. I mean, he had something inside him that he was passionate about. He was still going in life and nothing was going to slow him down. I love that. Yeah, I think um, find something you love, right? And you'll never work a day in your life. And yeah. real estate seems to fit that for me as well. Um, a lot of people kind of see it as a way out of their W-2. Uh, I, I have yeah. an extremely comfortable W2 at the moment. So I'm, I'm okay. kind of in that uh, awkward space of like needing a prod, which is kind of funny. Uh, in terms of in terms of that, that growth and that mindset, how do you how, do you goal set? Do you plan? Do you kind of meditate or all of the above? No, I don't really meditate. Uh, I, I'm not saying I'll never meditate, but like, I, it's just not my thing. Um, I've tried it and I'm just kind of like, eh, it's not really my thing. Um, no, I goal set. Like I, I have a whiteboard. I have a uh, eight by four whiteboard here. I have post-its everywhere. Dude, I have post-its. Like if you could see, let me just show you this. Hold on. Let me just show you what I see. This is going to blow your mind. You're going to get a kick out of this. Whoops. That's me. I don't know. Wait, let me turn this around. Can you see that? Oh this yeah. That's around. that would see that would stress me out. If you, if we probably will make this a video, but if you, if you can't see it, it's, um, a, a ring of post-its around a, a yeah. laptop screen. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's a situation, I took a picture of myself, but I mean, dude, I have post-its everywhere, I write down stuff, I'm always writing, I'm always, like, I'll write down my goals, like, what I really want, like, big shit, right, so I'm like, okay, I wanted to take my wife to Cabo for three weeks, I was actually going to make it four, but I had to move, I have to move across the country to have to, right, I have to move across the country, right, so I just kind of, you know, impeded that a little bit, but at the same time, I'm like, I want 100 single family homes, I got 100 single family homes, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and so, yeah, I have big goals, I'm always listening to business books, always always looking to see how I can better myself, always looking to understand my triggers. Cause it's like the old saying goes with every new level. There's always a new devil always. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to figure out where that's at. And the devil's always inside of me. It's not out here. It's not the economy. It's not inflation. It's not the president. It's not whatever you gun laws, whatever you want to blame the world on that everybody blames on. It's always internally. And so it's, I've always got to figure out who I am. Who am I? Who is Jason Rash? 
Why do I do what I do? And I'm trying to always uncover that. Why do I want to go to the gym? Why do I want to stay in shape? My wife is like, oh, you want to stay in shape to look good. I mean, I'm 45, but I stay in shape because I don't want, I don't really care about looking good. I care about having an edge on people. I care about having energy and clarity and being able to last longer than any other 45 and 35 and possibly 25 year old that I can put my eyes on to outwork him. I can outwork her. I can outwork him. I can outwork her. I can outwork this person, that 91 year old. I don't know if I could outwork him, but I could damn sure try. You know what I mean? <laughs> and give you a room for your money. Yeah. Yeah, he would. I'd give him a room for his money. Like, Let's go, old man. <laughs> No, I, I like that. And I think um, w- one thing you touched upon there is Kyle and I have discussed so many times, which is there's so much f- what I call fuzz pumped into our brains from stuff that you can, <laughs> you don't need to know about and you can do nothing about. So you can yeah. sit and watch TV and get outraged. You can sit and watch TV and absorb stuff you don't need to absorb, but actually nothing like that is going to help you. And if you take the decision to listen to an audiobook or a podcast or uh, anything like that you're going to get more out of it than like just ingesting co- stuff content force fed yeah. that you can't change or really shouldn't care about it's kind of interesting it's a bit like a soap opera right it's like you yeah. you turn the tv off and th- those people have gone and you don't there's nothing you can change about that yeah i i'm not a big fan of like watching stuff i i so like when covid came i turned everything off and i just watched marvel movies like every single Marvel. Movie. <laughs> excellent I, I, yeah you can't like if you've ever had covid have you had covid yet no I, i'm not i'm still i'm still in the hunt for the uh <laughs> the person that's not got it yet dude i'm telling you man like you may, you may win that race by the way <laughs> but i'm just like this was th- like this like, look let me be very honest it takes a lot to slow me down it slowed me down for 11 days so i just focused on watching marvel movies and the lord of the rings but beyond that um if i'm going to watch something that's going to take me out of the zone like and everybody needs to have that right my my mm-hmm. getting out of the zone is working out i like to have a drink every now and then but i like to work out that's what that's my jam right but my wife loves to watch TV, like um, Selling Sunset. It's about real estate, Airbnb shows, because we want to do some Airbnbs down the road. Like if I watch stuff like that, it's going to be to get to the next level because I'm expecting success at the next level. I'm expecting, and I know that if I put that in my mind, I could also be going down the road that, oh my God, that's amazing. Oh my God, that's a great thought. Or like watching the show that we need to do this and we should do that. That, that would be the only reason, but I hardly ever watch movies. Everybody's like, you need to see Top Gun. I'm like, dude, you need to go make some money. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just like, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to me, right? And you asked about goal set. I do every single day, right? But I also, those dude, those change all the time. Number one, I have one goal. It's always to be free. It's always to be free. Like, so like the money that I make, it's the runway. I consider it, it's called the runway of freedom is what I call it here in the house, right? Like the moment that runway, run, runway runs out is the very moment I have to go get a job. That's, mm-hmm. that's a fact. But right. it's also a situation, yeah, where I'm not so tuned out. Like so many people want to take their eye off the ball for just a moment. They want to take their eye off the ball just so they can like just relax, right? So I got to Cabo for three weeks. Like I relaxed. I got to like do whatever I could do. But most people never take that time to actually like enjoy themselves. But again, I never take my eye off the ball. Now I'm investing in my wife. Now I'm getting up and I'm reading a few books, but I never really like take my eye off the ball 100% ever. You just can't. I love that. And yeah, we, we spent a week in Hawaii and it was great family time, but also time to just collect and figure stuff out and think about yeah. things. And and where are we going? What are we doing? What's stuff? our plan? I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, conscious of time, how can people get in touch with you and, and kind of connect and you know learn more and all that good stuff? Sure. So you can go to jasonrash.com. Super easy. Jason, R-A-S-H.com. Super easy. You can also go find me on Instagram, Jason Rash, R-A-S-H. And same thing on Facebook, Jason Rash. And that's it's super easy. Yeah. I'm actually going to start a YouTube channel when I move to Florida. So I'm super jazzed about that. I will tell you one other thing, John. This may help your viewers or, and your listeners. So me and my wife are selling our house. I just want everybody to kind of like focus on this for a moment. Me and my wife are selling our house. It's a 4,000 square foot home. Not bragging. I'm just giving you facts here. That needs a lot of maintenance and repairs throughout the years, right? It's going to need that stuff. So uh, some of my time is spent doing that. I hire people for other things. And sometimes it's a combination of both. Sometimes it takes me away from doing business or creating content and things like that. So my wife is like, hey, we're going to move from a 4,000 square foot home into a 1,300 square foot apartment. There's no maintenance, okay? Where I live right now is high maintenance. Where I want to live is low maintenance, right? What do I'm going to have on my hands? I'm going to have a lot of time on my hands. 
So I told my wife, I said, what I'm going to do for the solid year that we're there grinding it out, I'm going to, I'm going to create content. Like I'm going to be a content creation machine. Like I won't have any excuses, but I think this is what a lot of people don't understand about life is like, whenever you take something away, you're adding something to it. So now I've got a ton of time on my hands. I know that having a lot of time on my hands for me personally is very, very bad. Like it's just bad. I'll, I'll do dumb stuff. I'll go off and be like, Hey, I want to go try this thing right here. Like, and, and it doesn't work out or something, something happens where I'm just like, ah, I'm just bored. Right. Like I'm just bored. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a YouTube channel. I'm gonna start pushing content through there. By the way, it will be Jason Rash at YouTube. I promise you it won't be like pink sunset 77 or something. Oh, It'll good. I was going to take that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, 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 you can't take it. Right. But I, I want you to understand that whenever your people, whenever you guys move into some new level, the new devil, right? The new devil is going to be too much time on my hands. I got, I got, I got plenty of money. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about like, oh my God, I'm going to make this work, blah, blah, blah. I'm fine with all that. It's having too much time on my hands. Now I got to do something that's going to push my brand even further. And now that I have a goal, that's why we went to Cabo. I was like, what is the goal for when we move to Florida? We're going to actually like start building our YouTube brand. We're going to start other things. We're going to do this and that and that. Now we have a plan, but we couldn't do that if we didn't take the vacation because we never sat down to actually make the time to like figure out what we were going to do. So hopefully that's helpful. It's I think that's great. Yeah, it's yeah. all about being intentional. And it's being less reactive and more proactive in terms of how you're setting your life out. Like, do you want to just be, like I said, force fed things and react to them? Or do you want to be intentional? I like that a lot. Yeah. Control what you can control, man. Like I told my team, whenever we got a team of a couple hundred thousand people all over the globe of sales reps. And whenever the pandemic happened, I said, listen to me very closely, control what you can control, control the six feet, six feet you have around you control that. That means keep your body healthy, keep your life healthy. Don't bring the drama in your house, blah, 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 but also control what you can control. You can control how much money comes in your house by go selling more product every single day. I know the busier people are, the more they're going to feel not going to be so distracted on all this stuff. So that's kind of how, how it all plays out, man. It's just control what you can control. What's interesting is something you, you mentioned earlier, which was earning 100K a month. Now, that, that to me seems like a large amount of money. How, do, how does someone build up to that? Or what are, the, what are the kind of processes to get into that? Sure. So number one, it's very simple. It's simple. I didn't say it was easy. It's simple. So it's, <laughs> what you have to do is you have to go out and help more people. But what you have to do to build 100K a month that doesn't require your own active energies, you have to build a system. And the system has to work independently of you and your energy and effort, intention and focus. So what, what's great about network marketing is that it does just that. So my wife and I, we sell products. Then we teach other people. We built a system on how to sell products. It's closing people, generating leads, scripts, and things like that. These work independently of us. You create them once, and they're able to be used by multiple people all over the globe. So we create the system. Other people take that system. They go off, and they, they close people on products, but they also teach other people the exact same system. So now I have hundreds of thousands of people all over the globe, and I don't have to know any of them. They just know the system, and that's how we make money. The same thing works in real property is that you build a system. You buy a bunch of homes. You pass them off to people. They do all the day-to-day -day management. If there's anything big, they call me. But other than that, I'm not hearing from them. And the same thing like running Facebook ads. So if you buy, build a real estate investing course, you build the ads, you shoot the videos once, you have somebody write the copy or you write the copy, boom, boom, boom. It pushes out. It does all of the work for you. And boom, money comes in. The further away that you can take from where you put your time and attention and focus on creating the money, so whenever you're paid the actual money, the further away you can make those, that is whenever you actually make, that's whenever you can make, make it to hundred thousand dollars a month. And this is what Warren Buffett does. He creates systems inside of businesses where he, they operate independently of him. He doesn't have his hand on every single one of those. He's built the system. So it's kind of like those, those people that talk about working on your business or working in your business. You want to be working on your business, not in it every single day, day to day. If you have that money, if you have money sitting around, the best investment you can make is always in your network. And so I did a deal recently in this year. I did a deal in January where I jumped into an investment. A friend approached me, known this guy for years. I'm not going to tell you how I know him, but I know him. He's a very, very prestigious guy. He's, done, he's an executive producer for movies. Okay. I will just put it like that, like very famous movies. But I've known him before since he was nobody. And I knew, knew I learned him from somebody else. But anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is he came to me, said, hey, we are going to buy 
$10 million worth of COVID tests from a Chinese manufacturer. And we're going to arbitrage. That means basically sell these to the Canadian government. We're looking to raise 10 million. We're going to give you 60% of your total investment. Minimum investment's $100,000 and you'll have it back on this date. It's been the best investment I've ever made, right? Because I got <laughs> 60% of my money, right? Guys, I made a 60% profit. I put in a hundred. I came out with, with 160. Fantastic deal. And what I want you to think about is I could have never done that if I had never known the person. So many people out there think they can do it on their own. They think that they have what it takes, but there's people in your network. You always have to be expanding your network because you don't know who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows who. And all of a sudden they like your energy. They like your vibe. They're looking for investors. It just happens to match up with what you're looking for as an investment. And so you have to understand that people bring opportunities. Opportunities always bring money. That's the thing is that so many people want to buy books. They don't they want to stay in their home. They don't want to leave. They don't want to go to like networking events. Like I go to any real estate convention that I can find, anyone that I can find in the near area. Doesn't matter where it is because I guarantee you, I will walk out of there friends with people. I go and I have a goal. I'll make 10 great quality contacts. I may walk away with hundreds of names and like Instagram follows and all that good stuff, but 10 quality people that I can help move their plan ahead by bringing them value and they can help me move my plan ahead by them being in a place that's that where I want to be. They were there where I'm at now. They were where I was at a year ago or two years ago. And so they can help me navigate that. So the best investment you could ever make is always in your network, always in your network. And if you got to pay, by the way, you said you were going to get some money. If you have to pay money to get into a mastermind, do it. The best money you'll ever spend is money that you that you could learn to grow your knowledge. So many people, they'd rather spend more money on like a Yeti or a new TV. You could take that 2,500 bucks and drop it into a real estate investing mastermind group where you're now in the same group with like 2,500 other people. Yeah, it's like you're, you're only getting like videos and calls every week, but you're connected with people who are actually wanting to do something with their life. How many of you need more friends out there that are actually go in places? I know I do. Mm -hmm. Just saying, but that is the biggest thing. And so what I did was I took 2,500 bucks, dropped it into a real estate mastermind. Now I'm friends with all these people, right? That's the price of a brand new television. So I didn't buy the TV. I put it in that. And now all of a sudden I'm friends with all these people who are much further ahead than me. My friends have got 70 homes. I got another friend who's got 30 homes. I've got a friend of mine that invests overseas. I got a friend of mine that does Airbnb. He's got like 4,000 Airbnbs. So, I mean, it's just a matter of just being connected with these people. And that is the best money you will ever spend is always in your network. Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Absolutely. Jason, thank you so much for your time today. And you were right. It was super energetic and I got a lot out of it. Hopefully so did our listeners. Uh, so thank you so much for your time. Yeah, John, I want to say thank you, man. I really appreciate you reaching out. It's crazy that we met on that post about money. We'll have to do another one of these about money, dude, because I love for sure. talking about money. <gasps> it's my favorite topic of all, man, is money. <laughs> um, yeah, it's crazy that we connected. So I just want to say thank you for trusting me and take, 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 uh, taking the journey with me, man. So fantastic. Thank you for having me, man. Awesome. And we'll be back next week. Thank you for listening to the Investories podcast. We all have a story. What's yours? The Investories Podcast.